Hello, welcome to Cooking Time. I'm David Martone, Executive Chef at Classic Time Cooking School in Westfield, New Jersey. On the menu this evening is Chicken Scarparello and Chicken Savoy. Assisting me today, I have Tina Giametta, and we're going to get started with a general preparation of a chicken. We are starting with a whole chicken, and we're going to butcher it up so that we can uh, cut it in quarters and then cut the quarters in half. We're going to disjoint the chicken legs and thighs by pulling back the chicken leg and thigh you'll expose the bone and you can see where to cut right through capturing all the meat off of the backbone. We we'll do both sides. This process saves you about two dollars a pound. Now we have the chicken thigh and leg, we need to separate that. There's a line of fat that runs right between the leg and thigh. We place our knife right there, and that takes the chicken right in half, separates the leg and thigh. Now we want to take the breast off the bone. We'll cut down the center. Breast bone is right in the middle. You can feel it with your fingers. Put your knife to either side. You can make a cut and exposes the breastbone on both sides. If you take your chef knife and run right down the bone structure, come right down to the joint of the wing, and the same way that we disjointed the leg and thigh, we pop it back, cut right through. Turn the chicken and do the same thing on the opposite side. Then we'll save our carcass and we can make stock. We want to disjoint the lower part of the wing. And we'll split the breast in two. We save our bones and we make stock at another time. One of the dishes we're doing, the scarparella, we're going to use some chicken stock, and we like that to be homemade. After dividing up the chicken, we want to take some seasoned flour, and we're going to dredge our chicken pieces in some seasoned flour. Chicken scarparello is a peasant type dish. And scarparello actually means shoemaker style. It's a funny thing about attaching labels to things. Growing up in Jersey City, my grandfather was a shoemaker. And I'll never forget someone coming to work at his house. He was having some masonry work done. And as he was outside asking some questions of the contractor, the contractor said to him, I'm going to do a great job here. He said, what do you think I'm going to do, a shoemaker's job? Well. That was an insult to my grandfather. The next thing you know, he was taking off his jacket and uh, ready to go to blows with the gentleman. So you always have to be careful the way you uh, associate labels with, uh, with anything that you do. Growing up as a little boy in Jersey City, we had a chicken market in Greenville section of Jersey City. And we always went there and bought fresh chickens, and my mom would make great chicken soup. I'm going to start my saute pans on some high heat, and I'm going to add some olive oil to both. Both of these dishes start with a very similar preparation in the beginning. We need chicken that's divided up into eight pieces. You take a whole chicken and divide it in eight pieces. You get a leg, a thigh from each side that gives you four. Two breasts divided in half gives you four more. Putting some olive oil in my saute pans, We'll let those heat up a minute. We never want to put anything into a saute pan unless the pan is hot. If we were to start piling this chicken into the pan now, what would happen is the pan would never regain its heat. And instead of the chicken sauteing and browning, it would just start to stew in its own juices. A lot of the juice would render out, and you would be fighting an ever-ending battle between the uh, juice rendering from the chicken and the pan never uh, getting hot enough. And you just suddenly have a big stew going. 
What we want is a nice crisp skin on the chicken so that we seal in all the uh, juices inside. The chicken market in Jersey City, I visited a couple years ago. I remember going there 35 years ago, and um, the place is exactly the same and owned by the same family. Same potbelly stove inside. My mom would always go in and she'd argue and back and forth with the uh, proprietor of the store, and she'd tell him, I don't want this young chicken, I want an old chicken because it had to be a certain type of chicken and a certain weight, and then he would pick the chicken and I would go in the back always with him. My mom would give me a little handkerchief and I'd be covering my face because the, the place just had feathers flying and just a, a, a place that you wouldn't associate with kids liking to go there. I guess at that early age I realized that uh, food was in my blood. Our pans are getting nice and warm at this point. And what we want to do is we want to start sauteing the chicken skin side down. I'm going to alternate and put one piece in each pan back and forth. So I'm evening out the heat in the pan. OK, so we're browning our chicken. We've added the chicken pieces alternately. And we've got a nice even heat distribution on the pan. We want to let those crisp up a bit so that we can get a nice golden brown on the outside before we turn them. So again, we're starting them skin side down. And both dishes are started the same way. We've floured the chicken in seasoned flour. To season the flour, all you need to do is to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Sometimes I use a little bit of a adobo mixture, which has a little bit of added garlic. I happen to like garlic a lot. If you're not a huge garlic fan, you can just simply use salt and pepper. Today we are using sea salt. We generally like to use the finest of all products. So we're using sea salt, which is really at the top of the level for salt. And although you might not think it's a, a huge difference, it, it has a very pronounced flavor compared to regular table salt. If sea salt isn't available, we use kosher salt. Use table salt as a last resort. So always try and use your, your best salt. And of course, when we use pepper, we're always using fresh ground pepper. I'm going to take a look at the chicken now to see how we're starting to brown up. Starting to get a little bit golden brown. And um, I'll start turning the chicken. Be careful of splashing. The chickens tend to release a little bit of moisture on the top side as you're browning the opposite side. So when you turn them, they do tend to splash a little bit. You can use a splatter screen over your pan. We're kind of flying without a net here today. As you can see, the chickens are really goldening uh, very nicely got some nice coloration. It's going to also give us a little bit of nice pan drippings in the way of some brown bits that are locked into the bottom of the pan. We never want to take those pans off the heat and go and wash them out. Any little brown bits, providing they're not blackened or burnt, we want to retain because that's the caramelized, reduced essence of the chicken. Later, we'll dump out some of the um, oil and we'll reduce down those brown bits a bit more, and we'll deglaze the pan. Deglazing the pan is a form of rehydrating the um, locked-in little bits that'll add flavoring and body to our sauce. 